Hi everyone, welcome to the video. If you're new here, my name is Ryan Roots and I am part of a three to four person online reselling team. We make YouTube videos about searching for buying and selling cool things for a profit online. And we upload new videos every single Friday, so make sure to subscribe to the channel. Today's video should be a pretty cool one, some flea market negotiations, some stuff that we sold recently on eBay. I also dive into wholesale a little bit, so lots to look forward to this video, but let's start with the flea market. Would you take two dollars? Would you take two dollars? No? Three? Three's fine. That's cool. Hamilton Beach. All yeah. Big. How much is this? Twenty. Fifteen? Would you do ten? Yeah. You said twelve dollars? Yeah. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do you mind if I leave it here and come get it on the way out? Okay. Is that okay? Don't forget. I won't forget, I won't forget. <laughs> The little ones. So. I watch you sometimes. Oh yeah? All the time. Cool, sometimes all the time. <laughs> nice. I was wondering if I ever seen you out here. I said, I'm Here we are. Put these up. Put these up. You can get like 35 for them online. And out here I've been telling people five bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's a, that's a $20. Try it. would be a $20 average, right? Yeah, try that. Try that. Is this yours? No, no, $25 for this coat. Sorry, how much? $25. $25? Okay. This is nice. Blade Runner. Yeah, those are the ones I have at home. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, the roller blade thing. They look like they're in pretty good condition. Um, I mean, I know they're used. I do they're called. She said what is this? Five, so I didn't know that. Did, did you check all the little the stuff? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it works. Everything works. Yeah, me too. It's kind of cool because it like lines up here. Mine don't do that. You said five dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. That's really cool. Excuse me. How much? Uh, Eight dollars. Eight dollars. Might be worth this. How much are these? Uh, ten. Ten. Oh. Uh, it's a bit rough inside yeah. there. Yeah. There's a lot of corrosion on those. Take five on this one? 
Five? No, give me six. Six bucks? I guess it's good. Yeah, yeah. six. Yeah. Okay. Ellie got a fruit cup. Fruit cup. Yum. All right, so let's talk about some of these items that we picked up at the flea market. First of all, I made a big time rookie mistake. Uh-oh. Yeah, so I bought this Guitar Hero guitar. Looks new, right? New open box. Yeah. I bought it kind of hastily, and then you guys saw, I was like, I'll come pick it up later. I didn't check it, which is definitely a rookie mistake. And then I got into the warehouse today, and I was looking through it. And it actually looks fine. It looks like it's in pretty decent condition. I would say almost new. Um, but when I opened the battery pack, wah, wah, wah. Ooh, crusties. Super crusty. I mean, we may be able to clean it up and sell it as, as used, but I also don't think it has the, um, the wireless dongle with it. So I don't know, probably a $12 mistake. Maybe we can clean it up and test it and sell it for like 30 bucks. But yeah, that's probably just a straight mistake. <laughs> But it happens, you know? Even six years full time later, we still make rookie mistakes. That's all right. Yeah. But some of these other things are good. So we have the Keith Urban Black Label uh, Guitar. I don't even know what this is. Guitar Experience. The Complete Guitar Experience. This one is brand new and sealed. Paid $3 for it. Probably a bit of a longer tail item. It may sit on eBay for a while. Um, but I think if we price it right, we should do well with it. We should be able to get around maybe 40 bucks for it. Whoa. So $3 into 40. Is that. it like a record in there or something? There's like you... a bunch of different learning. I think they're CDs. Ah. It's like to teach you how to maybe play the guitar. Hmm. Like Keith Urban. <laughs> Country style. And then Allie found these really nice Blade Runner rollerblades, size 10. We paid $5 for them. They're in very, very good condition. Like hardly any wear to them at all. And they're a good size. So I think we should be able to get, with shipping included, maybe 50, 60 bucks for these. Not bad. And then to ship them, I would say it's gonna cost us around, what do you think, Callie, 15? Yeah, I was thinking 10 to 15. 10 to 15 dollars? Probably closer to 15. Probably, yeah. But still a good buy there. And then the buy of the day, in my opinion, Allie also spotted this one, good job, babe, is this Winnie the Pooh cast iron doorstop. This one's in really good condition. There's a couple little like, nicks on it but we'll clean it up and it should it should sell pretty well there's a few people that have it listed very high in my opinion it's listed for over a hundred dollars if you look at actual sales on it i think realistically we could probably get around maybe sixty dollars but still we paid six bucks for it and to ship this we'll bubble wrap it and probably put it in like a regional a box maybe so call it maybe eight to nine dollars under ten dollars yeah to ship it yeah so under $10, paid six, probably gonna sell it for 60. So still some decent profit in that. So even though it's a $12 loss on the guitar, still, you know, at least we found some stuff at the flea market, so yeah. And you taught our subscribers to check battery compartments. A very valuable lesson. <laughs> Don't make rookie mistakes like me. <laughs> so now that we found some new stuff to list, Callie's gonna get that up on eBay. And she's also gonna walk you through some of our eBay sales from the past weekend. Okay, first up we have these slides. The brand is called Ufos, O-O-F-O-S. Those sold for $55. Then we have these Doe Win. I think that's how Ryan pronounced it. I was gonna say do win, <laughs> but it's Doe Win, I guess. Anyway, those sold for $41.95 plus $12 shipping. Then we have these Rock Revival women's jeans with the embellished pockets. Those sold for $50. Don't sleep on the Rock Revival jeans, especially when they have these like crazy patterned back button, back button, but pocket. This is a pocket. It's a pocket. Got these Hoka's. They sold for $45, free shipping. Some Tevas. These are uh, hiking water shoes things. These sold for $47.97. We've got these Nikes. They sold for $74. Nike Metcon DSX Flyknit 2 sneakers. This is just a little bread and butter item that we had laying around. She sold for $24. This is a new with tags Lily Pulitzer like pullover thing. And that one sold for $90. We got some Keen, really nice hiking boots ankle boots uh they're not steel toe but that's all right they still sold for 80 dollars now to get into the good stuff 
Brian got a bunch of Smashing Pumpkins t-shirts. I got most of them listed last week and three have sold. This one sold for $360. And then these two sold together. They're two different sizes. So I'm thinking maybe a, a husband and wife or a husband and husband or a wife and wife or a they and they. <laughs> bought these one sold for 195 and the other sold for 225 so i'm just gonna ship those out together and then this bad boy finally sold we've had this for over a year i'm positive definitely not a fast seller but this nice leather motorcycle full suit padded knees and bows and butt sold for $300 plus 25 shipping. I'm not sure if the 25 will cover it, but I think it will. It's pretty heavy and it doesn't fold up that easily. So we'll see about uh, shipping this out. Maybe I'll show you, I'll, I'll think about it. Okay, so I got the jacket all boxed up um, and I, I, I labeled it open this end because I put an extra piece of cardboard underneath in there so they don't cut the jacket. Um, it ended up costing, I think, just under $16, and it's going UPS ground. And then I had a pair of shoes that are going FedEx. So I have FedEx and UPS, I believe, are both open today, even though it's Labor Day, so I can still drop those items off. And then the USPS stuff will wait for tomorrow. Oh, hey, back again. It's Tuesday. I figured I'd show you a couple of our sales. Um, I accidentally packed up one of them. It's an Ernest t-shirt. I, I put it on my Insta story, so I'll show you that in a second, but it sold for $125. So here's the shirt. You know, the Ernest goes to jail, Ernest goes to camp, all them cool movies. That's the t-shirt. And then the other sale was pretty decent. We got these Gucci loafers. They sold for $140. Uh, Gucci, Gucci, Gucci gang. These are pretty nice. I don't remember where Ryan got these, but they sold. Now I'm going to ship them out. Thank you, Callie, so much for showing those sales. And I just wanted to go through how much we paid and where we found those items because a lot of people ask us to include that information in our videos too. So those Ufos sandals, we thrifted for $10. The Doen weightlifting shoes, we thrifted for $8. The Rock Revival jeans, another thrift store find for $7. The pair of Hoka's were also thrifted for $10. The Tiva sandals thrifted for $6. The Nike Metcon shoes, that was part of a wholesale buyout, we paid $10 a pair. The the Polo Ralph Lauren shirt thrifted for $4. The Lily Pulitzer quarter zip that was also thrifted for $8, I believe. The Keen Boots wholesale shoe buyout paid $10 for those. The Smashing Pumpkins tees that was part of a wholesale buy. I don't know exactly how much we paid per individual piece, but that was wholesale. The Leather Alpine Stars suit, we paid $50 for that at a garage sale. And Callie's exactly right. Um, we've had that for over a year, but still good profit. The vintage Ernest shirt, same thing, part of a wholesale deal. Don't know exactly what we paid, but we made profit on it. And the Gucci shoes were part of a wholesale shoe buyout. We paid $10 for those. Just got in a bunch of brand new dead stock mid 2000s, early 2000s to mid 2000s t-shirts. Some really good inventory here. Nothing too crazy expensive, um, but some good graphics and good quality, almost vintage inventory. So I thought I would update you on, um, at the end of last week's video, I was showing you uh, a wholesale deal that we were trying to do with, with the guy. Mostly Grateful Dead stuff. I showed him all the Grateful Dead tees um, and he ended up Picking out four, he chose these ones. He chose the Joey Mars Beach one, the roller coaster, Grateful Dead, the other Joey Mars fish one, and the dancing skeletons, Grateful Dead. So he's taking these four, and then I showed him all the dead stock stuff that we got in this week. Um, and he's, he took a bunch of that too. He took one of the Texas Chainsaw Massacres, he took a Black Crow shirt. He wanted four of the Ozfest shirts. He's getting a Cypress Hill shirt. He took, I think, five 
of the crow tees. And we have a few different designs of that, so I kind of try to mix it up for him. He grabbed a Shania Twain. Whoa. And then he took four, he took four Nirvana tees. I'm throwing him some good ones, like the Kurt dress shirt. We've had that one before, right? Yeah, we've had these a few times. Yeah. Nirvana. So we took four different Nirvana shirts, Kurt shirts. He took two of the Whoa. Woodstock. That's cool. Yeah, that one's cool. This one's really cool too. Then he took one of the Sin City Jessica Alba shirts. Nice. I forgot he also got five of these uh, Grateful Dead shirts. So two of those, three of these. Yeah, so all together, that's the wholesale order going out. And the total of it was 2220 no, $2,275 for everything. So a bit of a smaller deal um, because he didn't take a lot of the Grateful Dead stuff. Uh, but still good and we're still going to make some decent money and he got a good deal so yeah and speaking more about wholesale i wanted to address something very quickly i'm not going to harp on this but i just wanted to address this and make it more clear for those people who watch our channel so recently josh harry tornado bought a wholesale lot from us of hats and he made two youtube videos about that wholesale lot and in the comments there was a bit of negativity some people who just didn't really understand how wholesale works so i didn't say anything i wanted to let it pan out i feel like josh is a good guy i also feel like he's a very good content creator and he knew exactly what he was doing but at the end of the day we are full-time resellers and our wholesale side of the business we've been doing it for over five years and it currently makes up about 50 percent of our total business revenue so we know what we're doing and we know what we're selling. We also honor all of our deals, and if we do ever make a mistake, I have no problem making it right. It doesn't matter if it's a content creator, it doesn't matter if their videos get a bunch of views, we always make our mistakes right. That being said, I reached out to Josh yesterday and asked him how the hat sales went. He ended up taking all of them and running them as eBay auctions starting at a dollar, so I just wanted to see what his profit on the deal was. He let me know that he didn't know what the numbers were, so I took it on myself to go and check. His eBay sales are public, so you can go and see all of the sales for yourself. After adding up all the sales, I found that they made, gross revenue-wise, they made $1,565. And they ended up paying us $500 for the wholesale deal. So after all shipping expenses and after all eBay fees, they made a net profit of 69% on their investment. They also chose to sell the hats very quickly by putting them on auction, opposed to setting buy it now prices and waiting for the hats to sell. They sold them all very quickly, which also means that unfortunately, a lot of the hats were undersold, which tends to happen sometimes with auctions. But it's also important to mention that some of the hats were not researched uh, th thoroughly <laughs> um, and they ended up selling for a low price because of that. There were a couple hats like um, this one in particular that I've personally sold that hat for $45, I think 40 or $45. And it's it sold for like two dollars and fifty cents because the uh, the fighters weren't put in the title and boxing wasn't even mentioned. So there were a few hats like that, but overall, even with all that and selling them all within a week, they still made a sixty nine percent net profit in a week. Which, by the way, guys, for wholesale, I just want to make it very clear: for wholesale, that's amazing. If we personally can spend money and make a thirty percent net profit in a week, we're thrilled. That's incredible when it comes to wholesale. But really, I just wanted to include this little commentary in our YouTube video so you can see that we're not out to scam anybody. We want people to make money and wholesale is a great way to grow your business. If it's not for you, that's okay. But it is one of the best ways to scale up your business. You're never going to build a massive reselling business or even a big reselling business by only going to thrift stores and only going to flea markets and picking things one at a time. If you want to grow your reselling business to six figures plus, you have to start looking into stuff like wholesale. That or add additional revenue streams like you know, YouTube ad revenue. But at the end of the day, you just need to find what works well for you and what you enjoy doing. That's what really matters. And again, nothing at all against Josh, Harry Tornado. I think he's a good guy. I think he's very smart and he knew exactly what he was doing. I think he's a great creator and a smart business person. So shout out to Josh. I'm glad he was able to make a 69% return on his investment in a week, which is great. Um, and I'm glad I was able to kind of help clear up how wholesale works with our audience. So yeah. Back to the video. We got a few more really cool vintage Grateful Dead shirts in today. Calvin and Hobbes was one of my favorite books growing up. I read all of them. So this one is very, very cool. This actually might be one of my favorite Grateful Dead tees I've ever seen. I just really like like the negative space on it and the graphics are 
super cool super clean i like it a lot this one is also really neat because it's unique you don't really see grateful dead t-shirts like this extra large with the spring tour 1993 back hit I really like that. I like the nature vibes on this one. And then lastly, this is one we've had before, 1995 tour. This is a bootleg, so these were made in the parking lots of the of the shows. But yeah, really cool shirt. I love the graphics on this one too, and I love that it's like hand tie-dyed all over print. It's a nice shirt. Hey, one thing that I thought would be cool to start doing is to take questions from our previous videos comment section and answer them in the next video. So I thought I could do that today. One question that I really liked was from the old man's picks. And his question was, I have to wonder if the vintage t-shirt bubble is going to burst. So I thought that that was an interesting question because obviously we're in the market, we get that question quite often actually. And my answer to that question is, I think that it will in certain areas. And then I think that prices will just continue to increase in other areas. So for example, t-shirts that were mass produced, like Disney t-shirts, for example, a lot of those, most of them were mass produced in the 90s or 80s or whenever they were produced. They were mass produced for consumers to purchase. So that means that there's a lot of them. Now, because of like Instagram auctions and certain people getting really attached to Disney nostalgia, those prices of some of those Disney t-shirts skyrocketed during lockdown, during the pandemic, a lot of those skyrocketed up. And like I said, a lot of those shirts were mass produced. So there's many of them out there. So I think that a market like that will eventually have to start to settle down. But that being said, I think that other vintage t-shirt markets like very limited edition band t-shirts or say a small show, like if Nirvana back in the day did a really small show and they only had a very, very limited amount of merch that they only printed for that show, stuff like that, I believe is just gonna continue to increase in value because it's very limited, it's very sought after, bands like that have an amazing following and stuff like that really sells well to collectors. So like us, for example, if I'm investing in t-shirts, I'm buying stuff like that. I'm not going after the stuff that's currently hyped up. I'm not really going after like the hyped up wrestling shirts or the hyped up Disney stuff. I'm looking for more exclusive items to put my money into. That's if I'm buying to hold those t-shirts for the future. So hopefully that kind of helps answer that question. I think that it is going to burst in certain categories and it's not going to burst in other categories. And also please feel free to leave a question in the comment section of this video and maybe we'll answer it in the next video that we do. Alrighty guys and girls, I think that this is a good place to end today's video. So thank you again so much for watching. And once again, if you are new here and you enjoy videos about reselling, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And do me a favor, if you enjoyed today's video, before you go, please hit the thumbs up button to show your appreciation for the video. Thank you so much again. I'm Ryan Roots, Ali and Callie send their love. You guys are awesome. We love you so much and we'll see you next Friday. Subscribe, bye. Ha <laughs> ha.